can you reduce swing weight by adding weight to the handle? 610 people voted. 29% said yes. 71% said no. Here are some of the comments, right? <gasps> it's 10 com. He thinks the results of this poll are not ideal. This guy says yes, as long as the weight is added below the fulcrum point around four inches from the tail exclamation point. I very much intend to answer this question once and for all, but first let's put a shirt on. How is it going? In this video, I want to answer what may or may not be an age old debate, but I want to know, and there's a lot of controversy on this. Can you reduce the swing weight on a racket? So I have here an actual swing weight machine tool that measures not only swing weight, but also twist weight. That on top of the fact that it's actually pretty affordable is the reason that I bought it. So thank goodness a product like this exists. Big shout out to Graffiti. I will leave a link to this swing weight machine tool in the description of this video. The only thing you need to really operate this is a smartphone. And a disclaimer, the twist weight adapter is a separate purchase. And we're just focusing on swing weight today. So if you're familiar with the conversation, it goes something like this. You can or can't reduce swing weight by adding weight to the handle. However, some comments got me thinking, maybe you can, maybe you can. I know this for a fact, if you put a leather base grip on a racket, it almost doesn't change the swing weight at all. And I'm talking like a 10 to 15 gram difference on the handle. I've done this in a video, the one where I cut my Serena racket, I believe. I measured before and after installing a base grip and the difference in swing weight was less than one. So that either means that adding weight to the entire length of the handle doesn't dramatically affect swing weight at all because adding weight anywhere on the handle will not significantly affect swing weight. Or if you can reduce swing weight, it's because weight behind the fulcrum point will reduce swing weight. And the fulcrum point on this swing weight machine tool would be, I'm gonna grab a ruler. The fulcrum point is the point at which this pivots around and it's mounted right here, okay? So this machine will pivot this way around this point and its location is four inches away from the back, which is where the butt cap would be. So four inches from the butt cap is where the fulcrum point on a swing weight machine tool measures from. And the reason it's four inches from the butt cap is probably because that's a good estimate of where people's hands end when they grab a tennis racket, right? If you grab your handle like this, the top of your hand is probably about four inches away from the butt cap which is why the fulcrum point would be there because the pivot point is there. At least in theory, things are gonna vary a little bit because of how people and their styles can vary so much. Also, the racket's gonna need something to rest on to actually clamp into this machine. So let's settle this once and for all. I'm gonna get this mounted up in this swing weight machine, very easy to do. You just wanna put it in this way where the racket face is perpendicular, not parallel like this. It does matter. Make sure that's all the way to the back. Try to get that as straight up and down as possible. And for this machine, it's a very simple Velcro strap that holds this one in place. And the first thing we're gonna do is measure the swing weight just as it is. It's strong, it's got a dampener on, it has a base grip and an overgrip. Let's see what the swing weight is. All right, it's measuring. We'll take three measurements just to be cool. 334 sounds about right to me. One more. Yeah, still 334. And one more, just to get a nice average. All right, that's good. So we're just gonna call that 334. Now, the way I'm going to add weight to this is by clamping a clamp right at the back of this machine. I have two clamps here, but let's take the lighter of them. I have my scale here so we can weigh the clamp. Do you guys remember this clamp? It's our friend from my Serena Williams racket cut down video, where I cut the Serena endorsed racket down half an inch to 27 and a half. So this one helped me do that. Now, this clamp is getting way more attention than it signed up for. All right, I have no idea how much this thing weighs. Any guesses? Honestly, it's gonna weigh a lot for a tennis thing. Probably like 60 grams. Oh my gosh, I'm way off. It's 189 grams. All right, let's put 189 grams on the back of this thing and see what it does to the swing weight. It should reduce it, right? At least according to some. All right, right there, just like that. It's nice and sturdy, it's not flopping around, and it is right on the back of there. So let's see what this does to the swing weight. All right, new measurement group. What do you guys think right now? You put your money down. 
Is this going to reduce the swing weight or is it going to increase? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Let's see. This is the moment of truth because I know that adding weight to the handle in itself is not going to reduce the swing weight, but maybe it's because I was adding weight with leather base grips or something that go across the entire length of the handle, which means some of the length is behind the fulcrum point and the rest of it is in front of the fulcrum point. And the fulcrum point is pretty close to about halfway across the tennis handle. It's actually closer to the top part, but close enough that if weight behind the fulcrum point does reduce swing weight, that it would mostly cancel itself out across the length of the handle if you add weight across the length of the handle. All right, moment of truth, here we go. New measurement group started, let's see what we do. Previous swing weight was 334. Let's see what happens. I'm so nervous, you guys. Oh, it increased it, 352, huh? Now that is a lot of weight. This is like, I mean, probably more than half of the weight of the racket on the back of this swing weight machine tool. Yeah, 352.04. Let's do this. I'm gonna try to move the weight closer to the fulcrum point, but still behind it and see if the read is a little bit lower than this most recent measurement. So let's try that. I assume it'll still be higher than without the clamp at all. Let's see. Okay, I moved it up about half an inch, which might not seem like a lot, but honestly, when you have lead tape and you move it up half an inch, like a gram, especially around here, you'll notice a difference every half inch and it will be measurable. So you'd hope 189 grams of clamp would be measurable if I move it half an inch, right? Let's see, new measurement group. So I'm guessing it'll be a little bit lower than 352. Yep, it is, 346. Okay, I just did two measurements, but honestly, that's pretty conclusive for me. So what is the conclusion here? I think I have it. I'm gonna take all this off. And my phone. Yeah, just to recap, here are those numbers again. This is without the clamp, this is with the clamp at the back, and this is with the clamp moved up a little closer towards the fulcrum point, but still behind it. Wow, well, that was interesting. What did we learn? We learned that you cannot decrease the swing weight by adding weight to the handle, even if it's behind the fulcrum point. And that's just a fact, I've proven it. But I do want to say this, if you have a racket that has a high swing weight, you can probably make it feel as though it does have a lower swing weight after adding weight to the handle. And the reason that's true is because balance is so important to how a racket swings. Honestly, if you take weight away from your handle and you like how your racket swings right now, if you take weight out of it from the handle area specifically, like 10 to 15 grams, you might feel like the swing weight increased, but it's really just an illusion of a now more head heavy balance. And I kind of hate head heavy balance rackets, which a lot of beginner entry level rackets are because I feel like as you're swinging any kind of whippy motion, the racket almost pulls away from you. So I am not a fan of head heavy rackets. Balanced, that can be cool, but I like my rackets to be kind of heavy and head light. So there you guys have it. I'm glad to have finally squashed that debate. Anyone that says you can or cannot reduce the swing weight by adding weight to the handle of a tennis racket, send them to this video. What are they gonna say after they saw the results of that? I added 190 grams via a clamp behind the fulcrum point of a swing weight machine tool. And all that did was increase the swing weight. And I even moved it up closer towards the fulcrum point to prove that that reduced how much it increased the swing weight, but it did still indeed increase the swing weight. I don't know what else to say. I think that's a myth busted officially. Thank you to Graffiti for the swing weight machine tool. I didn't get it for free and I don't get any commission for shouting out that machine. I just think it's genuinely an amazing machine. But if you guys are interested in one, definitely buy it. It's like by far the most affordable swing weight machine tool to ever come out by far. I mean, most of the time they start at like 1500 bucks and up. And this measures twist weight, which those don't do. So this machine is actually revolutionary, both in price, but also in what it offers. So honestly, I think everybody should have one and every serious tennis shop should have one. Maybe not every person, but you know, anyone serious enough to care about the rackets like that. It costs about as much as a tennis racket. That's reasonable. Anyway, if you get one, be sure to let him know via email that Time for Tennis sent you. That way, maybe we can establish some sort of a thing. Maybe I can get little coupon codes going. We'll see, maybe not, that's fine. I'm just happy to shout out some good and groundbreaking products as usual. So if you get one, let them know, let me know. But if you do wanna support the channel, 
A great way to do so is by the links below. You can get my favorite strings, including Toro Line, specifically Wasabi, but also Super Toro is a pretty good runner up in my opinion, great snapback. So if you do, check out Toro Line, grab some Wasabi, grab some Super Toro if you want. Maybe grab both, they could be cool in a hybrid setup. And definitely check out Zero by Restring. It's the only string they make right now, but there's a 17 and a 16 gauge. I definitely lean people towards the 17 gauge if you can. And all the strings that I've mentioned so far, vastly, vastly, like by light years and light years, outperforms the competition, especially when you care about things like durability and snapback top spin potential, and specifically for zero tension maintenance. You know, pick your poison, but between those two strings, I think so many people will find their next favorite string if they haven't tried it already. I know a lot of you poly guys want that spin, you want that durability, but you want that control and that low power. I can't recommend anything above Torline Wasabi and Restring Zero. So use my code to get a discount, time for tennis, or click the links and they should automatically apply. Also check out RTP. They make some really innovative stuff, huh? especially their Ultra Grip socks. Don't even get me started on the Ultra Grip socks. I'm gonna tell you about how <laughs> grip is underrated and everyone's slipping in their shoes and they don't know it, except me because I'm on these Ultra Grip socks. But I want you to get on my level. I want you to experience the amazing feeling of not sliding around inside of your shoe. If you haven't felt that before, you don't know what I'm talking about. And it's the same thing for these strings. If you haven't felt a string perform the way that these do, you just aren't gonna be able to relate and appreciate until you do but you get 10% off of anything from RTP. They even have an electrolyte mix now to keep you extra hydrated. Kind of like Gatorade, but actually way better because Gatorade's eh, sort of a scam. The only electrolyte they really have in there is like salt. You need more than salt. You need magnesium, you need potassium, etc. So if you want to support a tennis brand that also has an electrolyte mix and for which you can get a discount on and support me and them and a growing brand at the same time and try some awesome innovative products for yourself, you know what to do. Links are below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. I try to get to all the comments and it was awesome busting this myth once and for all. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Happy hitting.